Welcome back, everybody. The White House announcing a preliminary deal when microchip with microchip te technology as part of the administration's Chips and Science Act. Christina Partzinevelis joins us right now. She's got more on that story. And Christina, good morning. Good morning. Well, the Biden administration is again choosing to focus on national security in the military with its second Chips Act grant of $162 million to microchip. Microchip makes these small chips used for very specific technology tasks, so not like the NVIDIA chips that we always talk about used in AI systems. These mature chips are critical, though, for America's auto sector, the industrial, as well as defense industries. So what's the, the money is going to be $90 million of the CHIPS Act grant going to modernize a fab in Colorado, and the remaining 72 will be for a fab in Oregon. Senior administration officials promised that gr this grant would triple production and provide roughly 700 new U U.S. jobs. The goal is, of course, to reshore and be less reliant on foreign suppliers. Rather than pick Intel or Taiwan Semi as first recipients, the Biden administration is choosing to focus on national security chip producers, like Microchip. Just a few weeks ago, the first official CHIPS Act award of $35 million was allocated to BAE Systems, a military contractor. So the $53 billion CHIPS Act funding actually has $39 billion allocated to all of these manufacturers on American soil. The Department of Commerce will have their hands full after receiving roughly 570 statements of interest and over 170 pre and full applications for funding. That means... Out of that $39 billion, there's still a lot more money left to be dispersed to other companies. So we're expecting more awards uh, in Q1 of this year. You know, the, the money is kind of slow to get out. I've heard oh, from some companies who have complained about this and gone on and forth, back and forth. It takes a long time to build up these fabs. It takes a long time, I would guess, to retool them. How, how long are we talking before we really get an influx of new chips that oh, are Oh, it'll be here? five to plus years. To, to your point, the fabs could take anywhere between three and five years. Many of these companies have started construction. Specifically with Microchip, they, they actually announced that they were going to be building these uh, fabs and modernizing it back in February. So they did this before even receiving the CHIPS Act funding. Mm -hmm. The CHIPS Act funding is only going to contribute maybe 10% of the total cost. They wow. promised $880 million. So it's a small portion, and the government wants you to know that. It's not, a, it's not a handout. We're not, you know, we're trying to incentivize private investment on U.S. soil. So it's a combination of private and public. The problem, though, from the, the chip side is that it's taking a while, but then the government side, I did a whole piece on it, they'll argue, what are you talking about? We, you know, just with, since February 2022, we've already given uh, two awards. It takes a lot of people. We have over 100 staff members, 500 applications or statements of interest, I should say. So it's not an easy task. And the whole goal is to, you know, stop relying as much on China. And it's interesting what this is, is focusing on these mature chips and the concern in the near future is we're all focused on AI. We're cutting off China, and China's just going to continue to dominate on the mature node side, which is for the auto sector, industrial. And so that's what uh, the, the Biden administration is showing, that, you know, we also need to focus on these mature chips, too. Will, will the chips come in at a price that is competitive with the market? Uh, I can't answer that right now, but I would assume, and this is me assuming, no, because it's going to be on U.S. soil. So how could you compete when you're, you're using American workers versus Taiwanese workers in, in, or Chinese workers in other countries? So you have to factor that in. Even Taiwan semiconductors complained, that, or not complained, I shouldn't use that word, but they did say that their fab in Arizona is going to cost a lot more than previously expected. And so I'm sure we're going to start to see a lot more of that over the next few years.